Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. Everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited today because today at the Young's house, Gina Young is going to share with you all how I make an amazing rib dinner. This rib dinner is going to be so easy. It does not require a lot of ingredients and you know if you make it Gina Young style, it's going to be so tasty. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. You all never had my rib dinner before. You better make yourself. Hey everyone, you will need some ribs. Here are our beautiful ribs that we have today. Our ribs have been washed in lemon juice, salt, and cold water, and I have pet dry these ribs. You're gonna need some brown sugar. You will need some beans. You're gonna need some Pepsi, as well as sweet relish. You're gonna need some mayo. We have two types of mayo. You will need mustard. You're going to need a little bit of oil and your favorite barbecue sauce. Let's work our way over to these spices because you're going to need some flavor. All right, you will need paprika. You're going to need onion and garlic powder, Montreal steak seasoning, pepper and salt. And these ingredients right here will go into the baked beans. You're going to need some vanilla, some cinnamon, and some minced onion. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this amazing yet so tasty recipe. Hey everyone, so the two side dishes that we're going to put alongside of these amazing ribs will be baked beans and then we're also going to make a small dish of potato salad and right here we have our potatoes and a very small onion okay so let's go ahead and throw together our baked beans it's really quick and simple and it's so tasty so we're going to put our beans right here into our dish just like so a lot of people like to drain the little bit of juice that's in with their beans I normally don't drain mine sometimes I will if I'm doing a whole bunch of cans and I have a lot of juice but if it's just one can like today there's not a lot of juice in there okay so now that we have all of the beautiful beans in our pan let's put some vanilla in there I know I know a lot of you have never heard of putting vanilla in your beans, but if you try it, you're gonna go crazy because it's amazing. It really gives your beans an amazing flavor. I'm just gonna go in with a cap full and a half, just like so. I hope you all are having an amazing day as well as a great work week if you're at work. All right, so now that we have vanilla, let's go in with some cinnamon, all right? We're going to put some minced onion in. If you don't have minced onion, you can use real onion. Or not to say this isn't real onion. This is real onion, but you all know what I mean. <laughs> all right, so we're going to put a nice amount in there because I love the flavor of the onion in my beans. All right, we're going to put some mustard, not too much. Just a little bit goes a long way when you're making baked beans. That right there is going to do the trick. It's going to give an amazing flavor. If you don't have barbecue sauce when you're making your baked beans, feel free to use a little bit of ketchup. It's going to really alter the flavor and make it delicious. Since we're having barbecue today, we're going to stir in barbecue sauce. All right, let's get that in just like so. Look how beautiful and it smells amazing. That vanilla the smell of the cinnamon and the barbecue sauce, listen here. Ooh, you better make you some. These barbecued baked beans are going to be so delicious. All right, now we're gonna put in some sugar. You can use white sugar. You can use brown sugar. You can honestly use the Splenda if you'd like. Okay, I'm just gonna grab some and put it in there. I'm just gonna eyeball mine. And you know how much sugar you'd like to have in yours and how sweet you'd like to have your beans. So you're going to do just that. Okay, what I will do is give the beans a little taste after I mix everything in to see if I'm happy with the flavor. Okay, my mouth is watering already. My goodness. Hoo-wee. I like to have my beans nice and sweet. All right, let's get this in just like so. I'm gonna put a little bit of meat in here as well. 
<laughs> if you have bacon on hand or a piece of smoked sausage, you can throw a couple of pieces in there and the oils from the bacon or your sausage will come out into the beans and really give an amazing flavor. All right. So now I'm going to taste this and see if I'm happy with the flavor. I want to really be able to taste this barbecue sauce. I want to be able to taste that onion, the vanilla, and the cinnamon. And the mustard. So I'm just going to taste the juice part. See if I'm happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, doggone, that's good. Mm. I'm very happy. Mm, that tastes good. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to grab these ribs and guess what I want? I want a little bit of this meat off of these ribs. We're going to take a little bit off. We're going to throw it in these beans. We're going to throw these beans in the oven. What better way? Grab you some of this meat just like so. Look at that beautiful meat. All right, we're going to get it right into our beans. It's going to be amazing flavor. You only need a couple of pieces and then I'm going to grab a few pieces of the fat as well. That fat will render down and put off amazing flavor. See that? That's what I'm looking for. Just like so. Now I'm going to take some of this fat because I want that flavor as well. Get right in there and make sure you taste the beans before you start to put the raw meat in for sure. Okay, perfect. One more little piece. Give me a little bit more. Look at that. Now take a peek in. We got our meat going. We have the onions and all of that lovely flavor. Let's get these in the oven and let them cook up until they're done. This part is done and out the way. Be right back. Okay everyone, so now that we have the beans in the oven, let's go ahead and make an amazing, really quick and simple, yet so tasty rub for our ribs. We're going to make a dry rub. When you're making a dry rub, I'm going to be honest with you, you can pretty much put a lot of any seasonings together. It's going to be delicious as long as you have the base, which the base should always be sugar. It'll be salt and pepper and then you kind of can kind of throw in anything else that you would like. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going in with brown sugar. Okay, and what I will do, I will save my dry rub, okay, and then I can use it for a later date, for chicken, for anything that I want to barbecue. Alright, so we have brown sugar and I used way too much. Come on, Gina. <laughs> but it's okay. All right, now we're moving in the right direction. Okay, so now I have my brown sugar just like so. We're gonna put in a nice amount of salt. Okay, just like so. Brown sugar and salt. You see I'm putting in a nice amount. We wanna really flavor up your meat. We're gonna put in some paprika and I'm gonna take the top off so I'm not shaking for days. Paprika is gonna give a nice flavor. This is not smoked paprika. I rarely, rarely use smoked paprika. This is just regular, okay? It's gonna give you a great color as well. Just like so. Now you all have seen me make ribs in the past. And normally when I make my ribs, I love to use pear juice or apple juice to steam my ribs. And you all know what's going in what's going on in our local markets today. You might go to the market and you might not be able to find what you're looking for. So since I don't have pear juice today, I don't have apple juice today, we're going to use some Pepsi. Absolutely we are and these ribs are going to be amazing. Trust me when I tell you this. Okay, so now we have our brown sugar, our paprika, and our salt. We're going to go in with onion and garlic powder, just like so. Don't be afraid to use it. Okay, it's going to give you amazing flavor. All right, just like so. This is a rub you won't be able to forget. Get you some pepper in there. And we're going to put some Montreal steak seasoning in. Absolutely we are. Great flavor right here. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> Whew, you better make you some. It's so easy, guys. Like, seriously? All right, so I'm going to grab my fork here, and we'll get all these lovely seasonings. The salt, the paprika, Montreal steak seasoning, garlic and onion powder, black pepper. Mix it all up, and guess what you have? You have a meat rub. This meat rub is so good. When you use it, you don't have to use a wet barbecue sauce. This right here will do the trick and it's going to give you amazing flavor by itself without sauce. So you can use the sauce if you want or just cook using your dry rub. All right. Sometimes I will purchase dry rubs that come already in the can or in the bag because it's really convenient. But if I have all the ingredients at home, why not make it yourself and you can save it. Put it in a, a sealed container that has a lid to it and save it. All right, so here this is. And you would just, you would be able to keep all of these. You don't have to refrigerate it if you save it, okay? It can just go in your cupboard. Just make sure it's sealed tight. All right, so right there is our dry rub. Now, what I want to do with our ribs, I want to go in and take a peek at these ribs. These ribs have some fat on them that I want to trim a little bit. So we're going to go and trim some of this fat. But I want to be careful not to trim too much because the fat, believe it or not, is going to give you amazing flavor. And a lot of this fat will render off. What does render mean? Well, render means during the cooking process, a lot of the fat will just melt off, okay? And when it melts, that fat will just drain down into the meat and make sure that it stays extra juicy. Okay, so be, be sure not to take all the fat off. Okay, sometimes if I see a big hunk, you know, like that, go ahead and cut it off. All right, just like so, making sure that we don't cut through to the meat. Sometimes things happen, but just like this. Let's trim it up just a little. All right. So I'm happy with the top. Let's look at the, the underneath side. Now remember I told you all about my local butcher that I went to, how they cut the big bone for me? I thought that was awesome. That was really nice to ask me, do you want that big bone cut? And I said, yes, and thank you. You know, that really helps when you go to slice your ribs. Sometimes you can't cut through that big bone. And it's like, my goodness, it's like pulling teeth trying to cut through that bone. So they cut that for me. And I'm very appreciative. Okay, so now we're just trimming off extra fat just like so and then I'm going to show you all how to take this membrane off taking the membrane off of your ribs is going to assure you that you're going to have fall off the bony extra tender ribs okay now here's the thing have I made ribs leaving the membrane on yes I have was they amazing yes they was but take it off and it's easy to take it off sometimes you can take like a paper towel and get a good grip onto this membrane here and give it a nice yank and it'll come off sometimes you have to work a little bit use a little bit of elbow grease and sometimes it comes off really easy so i'm hoping it comes off really easy for me today so i can show you all all right so i'm happy with the way that the back of this rib looks as well these are pork ribs Okay, got a little bit of trimming to do here. These are going to be cooked in the oven. And what I want you all to know is ribs do not have to be cooked on the grill in order to be successful. They can be amazing cooked in the oven. When I make ribs, they taste like they were cooked on the grill. Okay, and I'm going to show you how you can do it too. Because you can. Everything that Gina Young can do, you all can do as well. And it's going to taste exactly like mine's would. All right. So now we're moving along. This looks really good. Nice and clean. Gorgeous. All right. I got a little bit of fat that I want to remove here. This is a gorgeous rack of ribs. Okay. So now right here is the membrane that I'm speaking about. Let's see, sometimes it is a hassle, sometimes it's not. So if I can get 
Let's see if I can get a good hold on to it. We're going to pull that membrane off. Here's how it does. And like I said, feel free to, once you grab it, you can, you know, hold it with a paper towel and just yank it and it'll come off. Look at this. It's like a thin piece of paper. Sometimes it'll come off in pieces. Sometimes it, the whole thing will, right, will come off for you. All right, but you have to have patience. Having patience in your kitchen, you're going to have amazing food. All right, so let's see what we can do. Come on off for me. You're on YouTube. <laughs> All right, there it goes. There's a little bit that come off. And like I said, it might be little sections that comes off, and I'm okay. We're just going to get it off. All right, there's a little bit. I'm hoping that I can take a nice piece off, and it just rips off for me. It'll happen. I have faith. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let me go ahead and try the paper towel trick. Don't give up, though, guys. You can do it. I have my paper towel. I'm going to grasp it this way. Come on in and look at this. Come over from this way. You see that? Let's pull it. Okay? You don't need to eat it. You can eat it if you want to. You don't have to take it off if you didn't want to. But then I have a little piece here left. We want to get that off as well. So we're going to give it a nice grip. Just pull it. All right, keep working until you get it off. You can do it. <laughs> all right, piece by piece until you get it all off. All right, I got a little bit here. We're almost to the finish line. <laughs> there we go. Amazing. All right, now you're going to have extra tender ribs because we've taken off that membrane. And I know it's kind of interesting, right? Okay, so now that we have that done, what I want to do, I want to wash my hands and then I'll be right back and we're going to rub down this rib with some oil. The oil is going to keep these ribs nice and tender and it's going to help to um, for our rub to adhere to the ribs without falling off. Be back. Everyone, let's go ahead and oil down these ribs. So any kind of oil, okay? I'm just happen to use olive oil today. You got some vegetable oil, peanut oil, canola oil, would be just fine. Don't get crazy with the oil though. And then I have my handy dandy silicone brush. I'm just gonna brush the oil on just like so. Like I said, it's gonna keep these ribs nice and tender and help for the spices to adhere to this amazing rack of ribs. All right, perfect. So now we're gonna go in with this rub that smells so gorgeous. Get it on the back, just like this. Be generous, don't be afraid to season. This season is not too salty, it's not too sweet, it's going to be just lovely, you hear me? Oh, trust me when I tell you this. All right, and just pack it on. Pack it on the top. Pack it on the bottom. Push it in the sides, okay? Just like so. I'm going to literally do this on purpose to get those beautiful seasonings down into the meat. Okay? Amazing. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to grab the pan that this is going to cook in because I want to flip it over. And when I flip this over, I don't want for all, everything to fall off into this pan. If it's gonna fall off, if some is gonna fall off, let it fall off into the pan. It's just gonna create flavor. Let me grab my pan, stay right there. Okay, so we have our pan here. What we're going to do is we're going to align our pan with foil. Okay? Gonna put some foil in the bottom of this pan. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey! Here's where it gets so fun. Foil aligned pan. 
take your ribs, grab a nice hold of them, flip them right over. All right. Come on, guys. Just like so. Perfect. And now we're going to season the top of our ribs. Okay? Just like so, same thing. Don't be afraid to season just like this. And we're not going to put this in the oven right now. We're going to let these seasonings kind of soak down into this beautiful meat for at least 12 to 15 minutes, okay? Make sure that you have your meat setting outside of the refrigerator at least a half an hour before you get to working on it. You never want to take anything right out of the refrigerator. You just don't. Take it right out of the refrigerator and start cooking it because it'll be so cold. It'll seize up once it hits the oven and your meat's going to be dry. We're not cooking any dried meats in this kitchen. So just let it rest for a half an hour before you get started. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Spices. Beautiful. Let them soak in. And you'll see that they've actually soaken down into the meat because the brown sugar will start to look kind of wet and a little bit darker. Once we achieve that, I'll be right back. Hey everyone. Now, remember I spoke about how we wanted those spices to kind of seep down into this beautiful meat. And you'll start to see that that dried seasoning, that dried rub that we put on here is going to start to look wet. This is what it should look like just like so, pretty much all over. So now I'm happy and we can move forward. Here's what we're gonna do. If you have apple juice, if you have pear juice, if you have a Coca-Cola or even a Pepsi, get you some in there, okay? This is going to help to create an amazing bath that this steams in. Okay, and some of you might say, but Gina, it's gonna leak through. If it leaks through, guess what? It's still gonna steam up through it. Don't freak out about that, okay? All right, so here's what I like to do. Oh yeah. We're gonna make this nice and tight with foil. Keep in mind that I use two pieces of foil that this is sitting on. I'm gonna put a little bit more Pepsi. Get right on in there, baby. Ha! And make these ribs nice and tender, honey. You hear me? Oh yeah. You see how it didn't leak through? Like I said, if it does, it's completely okay. All right. So now that we have our Pepsi in your apple juice or your pear juice, let's make this nice and tight. Going to make it somewhat like a, like a rib burrito. Just make it tight, just like this. We want for these ribs to steam and that juice and those beautiful seasonings. These bad boys are going to be so tender. You hear me? Now we're going to put them in the oven on the middle rack, 350 degrees. We're going to cook these until the ribs start to pull away from the bone a little bit. And I'll show you all what that should look like. Okay? It does take some time. It might take an hour in your oven. It might take 40 minutes. Heck, it might take an hour and a half. All right? You got to have time when you're cooking soul food. You hear me? You got to have a little bit of time on your hands to make some amazing food. And I want these to be so tender. And now I'm just going to do a number like this. Okay? Throw them in the oven. And when I come back, we're going to cut up some potatoes so we can make an amazing potato salad. Okay everyone, so we have potatoes that I've already peeled. I've washed off the potatoes ahead of time before we peeled the potatoes, but we are gonna rinse them off several times to get rid of some of the starch. And how you do that is you just put your potatoes in water until the water starts to come clear. So you have them soaking in cold water and it'll be cloudy, but I'll show you and then you'll rinse it until the water turns nice and clear. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to cut our potatoes just like so. When I make potato salad, I kind of make big chunks just like that. You wanna make them all the same size as much as you can. Sometimes it's hard to make all your potatoes the same size, 
but as much as you can. That way they cook at the same time and they all will get done around the same time. All right, now as far as this potato salad, this potato salad is gonna be really simple. It's going to be delicious. It's not gonna have celery in it because I don't have celery and I'm not gonna travel out to the local market today. We're all supposed to be in our house for 14 days or more. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be more. I don't have celery, so we'll do with what we have and my potato salad is still gonna be delicious. Absolutely. You know, honestly, if you have some celery seeds, you could use that, all right? Keep in mind, you know, improvise on different things. I'll be right back. Everyone, so let's get some potatoes chopped up just like so. All right, I'm not making a huge batch, just a batch that could feed us for tonight. And if we have some left over for tomorrow, you better believe we're going to finish it up. All right? So when I make potato salad, I love to use two different kinds of mayonnaise. You can use a regular mayonnaise. You can use Miracle Whip. If you don't use Miracle Whip, which is a mayonnaise that's a little bit sweeter, you're going to want to put some sugar in. But even though I'm going to use a little bit of mayonnaise today, I do want to put some sugar in. I'm going to put some vinegar in like I always do. It makes potato salad absolutely amazing. We're going to put some salt and pepper and garlic and onion powder in there. We're going to really flavor this potato salad up. Now, I cut the small onion. Now, you can see we're going to use this part of the onion. I'm not going to use this. And I chopped it up very, very, very fine on purpose because no one wants to bite into a raw piece of onion, a huge piece. So we have just enough to flavor the potato salad, but not too much and not huge pieces. All right. Now I'm going to share with you all something interesting that I like to do with onions when I do put onions in my potato salad. It's really interesting, but we'll, I'll show you when we get there. Okay, so now that my potatoes are nice and cut, we're going to rinse them off. All right, with cold water only, rinsing off that extra starch. What I like to do is I like to, when my potatoes are done, and right before they get fork tender, I will drain them from the water, and then I literally take my cooked potatoes, I throw them directly in the freezer so they can cool down quickly, because I don't have any patience. I don't want to be waiting all day for my potatoes to cool down. I throw them in the freezer, they are quickly cooled down, and then I can mix up my potato salad. We're going to do that today. You can use any kind of potatoes you want to use for your potato salad. You can use the red potatoes as well. Absolutely you can. All right, here in a second, we'll rinse these off and I'll be right back. Hey everyone, so we're here at the sink. Let's get these potatoes nice and rinsed. It's raining cats and dogs outside, guys. What is the weather like where you all are at? It is so much rain. I don't know if you all can see. Let me know in the comment section below what your weather is right now. It was actually a nice day. Here, it was start, when we woke up this morning, it was 62. And they said it was going to be 68 degrees. I'm not sure if it made it there, but it's starting to rain cats and dogs right now. So take a peek in at our potatoes. You can see that the water is cloudy. We don't want that extra starch. Get rid of it. Okay, and this is how I do my rice. I do my rice this way as well. I'm going to keep rinsing these bad boys until that water turns clear. You better believe we are. All right, we're going to rinse it. And you know, honestly, we're making a barbecued um, rib dinner today, but it's so easy. You know, you do have to wait a little bit of time on your ribs to cook. That's, you know, that's a fact. But as far as this potato salad, it's going to be done in a cinch. The baked beans are almost done. We're going to take those out. And all we have to do is kind of just relax and let those ribs get nice and tender. And once they're tender, we're going to take them out and we're going to baste them with your favorite barbecue sauce. Throw them back in the oven. And dinner is served. Like, it's Thursday at the Young's house. You don't always have to wait for a holiday. 
for a birthday to eat nice, you know? And you can have fun, have fun, guys. We're all off work. Make something good for your family and friends and all of your loved ones. All right. The water is just starting to get clear, just like we want it. And I'm happy. I'll give it one more rinse. Try my best not to lose any potatoes. Perfect. Now this time I fill the bowl up. This is going to be the water that I use to cook my potatoes in. Let's make our way over to the stove and we're going to boil some potatoes. Be right back. Okay, everyone, take a look at these beans. All right, look at these beans. Look how beautiful. <laughs> hey, they are beautiful. They are gorgeous. The meat is cooked. Oh, all that flavor from that meat, the flavor from the fat. Keep in mind, we put those, look at the onions, the dehydrated onions in there. Oh, listen here. When we put that barbecue sauce in here, we really took these beans up to another level. When we put the cinnamon and the vanilla, chow please, okay? So there's not really much I need to say about these. These beans speak for their self. Now, as far as our potatoes, I am gonna put these back in the oven just for maybe another 15 minutes. I just wanted to take them out and share with you all what they look like right now. Now, as far as our potatoes, our potatoes have been cut, cleaned, rinsed, and now we have them on a medium-high heat. Medium high heat is going to cook them to perfection. I will put a lid on them and I'm going to salt the water a little bit. Anytime you make potatoes, noodles, or rice, you always want to salt your water. Give these potatoes some flavor while they're cooking. Now somebody asked me the other day, they said, Gina, how come, whatever it was I was cooking, how come you put it in the frying pan? Um, and I should have probably put it in a small stock pan. I thought, great question. So I told her, I said, it's only because, so you all can see what I'm doing in the video. Sometimes it's a little difficult for the camera to get down into a stock pot, rather me putting it in a pan this way and you can see really easy. So great question. So that's the reason why I didn't put these potatoes into a stock pot. I put them in a pan so you all can see. I'm gonna cover this, I'm gonna salt this, and I'll be right back. Okay everyone, my potatoes have cooked for 22 minutes, they are perfectly done. Now come and look at these. This is what your potatoes should look like. You don't want them so soft to where they fall apart when you touch them, but you don't want them to have any crunch to them. This is the perfect potato. I am going to drain these potatoes. And then I'm literally gonna take these potatoes, I'm gonna put them in this bowl here, and we're gonna get these into the freezer. But come with me, we can do this now. Okay, so let's go ahead and we want to drain our potatoes in a colander just like so. Get all of that extra water off. All right, and then we're going to put our potatoes in this bowl right here. This bowl is going directly into the freezer so our potatoes can cool down. Once they cool down, we're going to come back and we're going to mix up some amazing potato salad. Now, I did put four or five eggs on the stove. I'm boiling them because you cannot have amazing potato salad without a nice amount of boiled eggs in them. Be back. Okay, everyone, so our potatoes are nice and cold down. There was one thing that I almost forgot to tell you all about. What I like to do with my onions, when I put onions in potato salad, because I don't always put onions in my potato salad. So if I do, I like to throw in my onions into the potatoes while they're still warm. And it kind of takes out that really pungent taste from the onions and keep in mind that you want to dice up those onions nice and small. So we've already added the onions and mixed them in the potatoes. So like I said, that pungent flavor can come out of the onions a little bit. They're not going to be just really straight raw taste. Potatoes are cooled down. Now let's go ahead and start mixing in our ingredients. Relish. Sweet relish baby. All right, and what I'm gonna do, I'm literally gonna 
try my best to get as much liquid out of the relish by just doing this much as I can and I'm gonna put I'm gonna start off with three teaspoons of the relish my mouth is salivating I cannot wait to eat this fresh potato salad when is the last time you all have potato salad I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit more just like so okay so that and then we're gonna season I might season two times what you want to do this is the salt you want to go in and you want to taste it see if you're happy with your seasonings and if you're not happy once you taste it re-season okay don't be afraid to season those of you that are out there that are afraid to season things your food will be flavorless don't be that person don't do it don't do it to yourself here's that pepper you need it all right onion and garlic powder definitely a must and potato salad it's going to give you an amazing flavor just like so go in with your mayonnaise any kind of mayonnaise you want to use honestly i'm using duke's mayo you can use hellman's you can use heinz you can use just miracle whip if you like I kind of like to mix the two together or sometimes I'll just use what mayonnaise I may have at the house okay all right so we're gonna start off with just a little bit it's always best to start off with a little bit because you can always add to but if you put too much in in the beginning it's hard to take away okay so just keep that in mind always so now we're going in with this beautiful Miracle Whip, just like so. And you don't want to use too much because nobody wants a really, really wet potato salad. That's like the worst. You want it to have enough dressing on it, you know, to taste and make it amazing, but not too much. Don't overwhelm the potatoes. In we go with some mustard, definitely a must. We're gonna use some sugar. I'm not gonna get carried away with it. Is this gonna make our potato salad sweet? No, not at all, don't worry about that, but it's gonna give amazing flavor. All right, just like so, that's enough. A little bit of vinegar to kind of balance out that sugar a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. This is not a full cap full. It's, it's around about a half of a cap full all right i cannot my mouth i am so ready to taste this like right now my goodness all right and our ribs are ready to come out of uh, what i'm doing right now is i'm literally just mixing everything in you see how the potatoes are still kind of big but i do want to mush up some of those potatoes okay I like to keep some of the potatoes nice and big chunks, but some of them I'm going to go in and mash them. All right, we've got some beautiful color going on here from the color of the mustard. Oh, yes, I am so excited. Hoo you better make you some. All right. Perfect, that sound right there. Come in and listen to the sound. This sound right here. <laughs> I might be crazy, but I live for that sound. Oh, that's delicious sound. All right, so what I wanna do, we are gonna use some paprika just to make it nice and beautiful, but I wanna taste it. I wanna see if I'm happy with the seasonings. If I'm happy with the seasonings, we'll move on and we'll put these beautiful boiled eggs into our salad. I've peeled the boiled eggs already. I'm going in for a big bite, guys. I can't, I can't help myself. Look at this. Come on in, take a bite. Potato salad 101, Gita Young style. Hoo wee. Do I need more seasoning? Not at all. This is perfect. Got a little bit of sweetness. Get a little bit of tang. It's nice and creamy. It's not too wet. This right here, chow please. <laughs> mm, I wanted to show you all what I was gonna do, 
with that brown sugar. The extra brown sugar, remember I poured it into a bowl. We're just gonna use this Ziploc freezer bag. We're gonna put it in the pantry. And next time I need brown sugar, voila, take it out. Okay, so now here's what we're gonna do. I want to take a knife. We're gonna cut some of these beautiful eggs and we're gonna get them right into our bowl. Just like so, I will be right back. Okay hey everyone, let's cut some beautiful eggs just like so. Okay, I'm just doing it this way. And then I like to go and chop them up. Some people just mush the eggs between their fingers. I really don't like to do that. I just wanna chop mine up in this manner and throw them in. It's pretty simple. <laughs> All right. If you don't use knives a lot, be very careful with doing this. I highly suggest cutting yours on a cutting board for sure. Okay, I'm just so used to doing this. All right, when I make potato salad, I love a lot of eggs in my potato salad. Guys, from the beginning of this video, my stomach has been rumbling. Oh man, I can't wait. I can't wait to sink my teeth down into this. There's nothing like a nice rib dinner with potato salad on the side and some nice sweet baked beans. Oh, those baked beans, listen here. They are gorgeous. And we're gonna taste this once again, once we get the eggs in. All right, we got our beautiful eggs done. Just like so. Let's give this a nice mix. And then I'm gonna go in with my spoon and I wanna mash some of these potatoes. Just a little bit, like I said, I'm not trying to make mashed potatoes here, okay? Just wanna mash some of them. You want some of them to still have some texture. All right, and I will grab my paprika. I'll sprinkle a little bit on top. We have our baked beans done. Our ribs are almost done. Potato salad, done. All right, let's take one more bite. And this time, we're gonna taste it with the egg. <laughs> is that just another excuse to taste it? Absolutely it is. Take a bite. <laughs> Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. mm. So good. Be back. Hey everyone, take a look at these beautiful ribs. Now, remember I spoke about you want to cook your ribs until they start to pull away from the bone a little bit. Let me show you. Okay, so right here, the meat was all the way here, remember? And now it's pulled away a little bit. It's pulled up. And that means that your ribs are tender enough and they're cooked enough to where we can start to put, <laughs> guys, my mouth is watering through this whole video. We can start to put the sauce on the ribs, okay? So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put sauce on the bottom part of the rib. I'm only gonna sauce the bottom one time. And you can see that I'm using a cookie sheet and I'm using a cooling rack, so any extra sauce can drip down off of the cooling rack into the cookie sheet because typically, sometimes barbecue sauce can burn. And you don't wanna just have it sitting in a pool of burnt barbecue sauce. Okay, so set it on the cooling rack, let it drip into this pan, and then you don't have to worry about that. Let's flip it over and get that bottom part nice and coated in the barbecue sauce <laughs> oh look at this baby listen here my goodness who you better make you some see how it's pulled away that's what you're looking for you're always looking for that when you make ribs in the oven now right here i have my favorite barbecue sauce and we're just gonna paint it on oh i'm even gonna paint the barbecue sauce on those bones because i don't know about you all but i like to suck on rib bones absolutely chicken bone rib bone if it's a bone my goodness 
Hooey! All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna paint that on. We're gonna put a nice amount on this one because like I said, keep in mind, we're only gonna paint this bottom part one time. All right, gorgeous. This is a gorgeous rack of ribs. Oh, <laughs> and I know that they're gonna be so tender and fall apart. Woo, I said fall apart. I meant to say that. <laughs> I did, I meant to say that. Cause they're gonna fall apart in my belly. You hear me? Woo, get in my belly. All right, look at that, perfect. Now we're gonna flip them back over. Let's get a good hold onto them. Come on, don't fall apart on me. Perfect. And now we're gonna glaze them. What I like to do, I like to put the barbecue sauce on two to three times. Sometimes I don't always do that third time because most of the time, the second time I'm happy with, okay? And what I like to do is I'm gonna crank the oven up just a little bit more, maybe to um, 375. We're gonna cook it for 15 minutes and let that barbecue sauce cook down into that pork. And then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna baste it again with the barbecue sauce. If you're not happy with the amount of barbecue sauce, do it a third time. Every time that barbecue sauce goes back in the oven, it's 15 minutes to let it seep down into these amazing ribs. All right, so you can see how much I'm putting on. All right, make it look pretty, guys. Don't just throw it on there, you know? I'm a person that's really not a fan of a whole lot of sauce or a whole, whole lot of gravy. So I could actually, if it was up to me, I would baste it one time with this barbecue sauce and I would be satisfied. But I know that my family, they love the sauce. So I'm gonna kinda make everybody happy and I'll do too. It's very rare that I put three coatings on. We'll just see what it looks like. All right, nice and smeared and smothered. And this barbecue sauce, get all those crevices, making sure that we get those bones. Just like so, look at this. Oh, girl! Woo, it was something else in that kitchen. You hear me? Mm, I hear you. <laughs> Wee. All right, these are going in the oven. 375 degrees. Take them out after 15 minutes. We're coming back and we're going to baste them again. And then we're going to say an amazing prayer. I'm going to give you all that first bite. Let's get these in the oven. Okay, hey everyone, now it's time to put our second baste on. I'm only going to do two. Okay, I can look at it right now and tell that I only want two bastings. Look at this. It's gorgeous. The sauce is really nice and stuck on there. It's nice, beautiful, and sticky. I'm not going to use as much sauce as I used the first time. Okay, just like this. Keep in mind that I cranked up the oven. All right, beautiful. This right here, my goodness. Hooey, and I'm going to show you all these beans. We'll give them a nice stir, and we'll give them a taste as well. <laughs> Guys, I'm hungry today. All right. Beautiful ribs, and they were so easy to make. Any kind of ribs that you wanted to make. If you want to do the country style ribs, if you want to cut these up before you make them, there's, you can do beef. Do this recipe, same recipe. You can use the beef. All right. Beautiful. I got my second coat on there. I'm going to go back over here, get those bones. Just like so. This is going back in the oven. 15 minutes. Oh, listen here. If you all enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Gina Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know, hey, tell the whole world about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. Absolutely. This is going in the oven. Take a look at these beans. We have our beautiful, let me show you. I put the uh, paprika on there. That's how you make potato salad look gorgeous. And here we have those beans. Oh, and we're going to taste them right now. Oh, we're going to taste them right now. I love how nice and thick they are. Look at this. They're not really saucy. They are perfection. Mmm. 
Look at that. Take a big bite of these. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. 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 In the oven we go. Wet these ribs and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone. Our meal is done. Take a look. Take a look. <laughs> hey. Oh, take a look, baby. Look at this rack of ribs. It is gorgeous. All right. And we have our beans on the side as well. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today and for every day. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Send your angels down to surround us day and night and your Holy Spirit to help us make good decisions. Give us peace over our mind in the name of Jesus. We pray that no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In Jesus' name. Devil, you have no authority over this household in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the roof over our head, the food, the love, the peace and the joy that you bring us every day, Lord. We thank you for that. Amen. Now, amen once again. Now, here's what I want to do. You want to let these ribs set for at least a half an hour before you slice down into them. They have set for around about 20 minutes. I can't wait any longer. Here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and start slicing down into these ribs. What I like to do, sometimes I like to do every two bones. Sometimes I'll do every one bone. All depends on how many people I'm trying to feed. So we're going to start here. We're going to work our way down. You can literally see the bones and you can see where you're going to cut. Okay, even over here, <clears throat> you'll be able to actually, I have two knives, I'm trying to see which one I want to use. Most likely it'll be this one here. I want to grab a fork really quickly to assist me while I cut these ribs. So let's go ahead and cut right here. Oh, baby! Hey! Girl! Look at this. Come on in. Come on in and look at this, guys perfection it's gorgeous it's beautiful and you see that it's juicy so if we cut it if we every one rib here's the size sometimes you might hit a bone like I'm doing right now just kind of work your way around the bone it's gonna happen all right oh man oh it's hot but I want you to look at this beautiful gorgeous riblet oh Oh, hey, 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 hey. I know, I know. Let me, hold on, guys. <laughs> hold on, guys. I hate messy hands. I got barbecue sauce on my fingers. All right, so I'm going to do this one every two bones. Just going to work my way around the bone. It's a bone that I'm touching right now, but the meat itself is cutting like butter. Ooh, like butter, baby. Look at this. Oh, Wee child, listen here. Mm, 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 mm. My goodness. So we're gonna go. We're, we'll do two, and then we'll do some one bones. Because every once in a while, I like to just walk in the kitchen and grab me a bone and walk away. <laughs> and then 15 minutes later, I'll come back in and grab me one of the one bones again and run away. <laughs> All right, this one will be every two bones. Look at this. Working my way around the bone. Oh, once again, so gorgeous. Come in and look at this one. Oh, I know you see it. I know you can see the juice. Can you see the juice just, oh. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to cut this whole rack, but it looks like I just might. Oh, let's take a peek in at this one. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm having a little bit too much fun here. But you know what? God is good all the time. And all the time, God is absolutely amazing. You hear me? Whew, listen here. Oh! <laughs> yes! Get in my belly right now! Woo! I'm going to take the time to go ahead and cut through these bones. I'm so thankful that my meat market did that for me. That really helps. It's so hard to cut through that big piece. Mm, mm, mm. This one right here, see this one right here is calling my name. 
look at that gorgeousness gorgeous and it doesn't have too much sauce on it take a peek at this one also let's make a plate right now i've waited long enough i'll make a plate you all get that first bite everyone take a look at this plate this plate is loaded oh no this is not my plate guys get serious i'm just this is going to be my thumbnail picture but look how gorgeous this is you hear me oh <laughs> hey my goodness who we make you some i am gonna take this rib though this rib right here is calling my name look at that look how gorgeous and juicy oh just tell me you see the juice when i squeeze do you see any juice i know you do and i can't even see from that side mm, we're going in <laughs> mouth watering grab my paper towel let's do this I'm giving you all that first bite. First bite, and then I'm going ham on this. First thing I want to taste, my potato salad. It's going to be delicious, even though I didn't have celery. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. Oh, give me more. Mmm. 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 And we go with the beans. We're doing the sides first because that's going to give us plenty of time to let those ribs cool down. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> mm. Listen here. I'm going to show you how to make some good meals. You hear me? Jeannie Young style. These ribs are going to smack you in the face. Oh! I'm going in. Mmm. Listen, these things are so doggone tender. Mm. Did I give y'all a bite of these? <laughs> Did I even give you a bite? Mm. Take a bite. Did you see? Did you see how the bone came off of the meat? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's talk about how gorgeous this meat is. Mm. It's soft. Mm. Listen here. Your grandma with no teeth is not going to have a problem with these ribs. They are so tender. So flavorful. The rub we put on here is outstanding. Mm. Take another bite. I'm going in. Mmm. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> you see right now there's no stopping me baby you are so good you are why are you so good Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. And as always, <laughs> I gotta taste this potato salad. God bless you all. Thank you all for watching. Good night.